This is part two of Now Faith, more than ever. Amen. We need that Now Faith, more than ever. Bless us, Father, as we preach the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Now Faith, <laughs> more than ever. Um, now, it says in, in verse 1, now faith. Now, I know that the word now here is, among other things, a transitional word, a transitional term. It shows transition. It can easily be uh, interpreted but faith or namely faith because he's transitioning in chapter number uh, 10 and verse 39 he says but we are, are not of them who draw back unto perdition but of them that believe to the saving of the soul namely faith is the substance of things hope for you follow me so there's a transition but now faith is not merely a transition but he's also being didactic because he is speaking of the necessity of believing in, while in their current situation. Believing God, not I'm going to believe him tomorrow, but I have to believe him now. It says now faith, it will it, become clearer, is the substance of things hoped for. The word substance in verse 1 is the same uh, Greek word uh, for substance that is translated in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 as express image. It's the same word. Hebrews 1, 1 and 3 says, speaking of Christ, who being the brightness of of his glory and the express image of his person. So Jesus is the substance of God the Father. Now faith is the express image. And not only does it mean, not only is it the express image of things hoped for, but another uh, uh, word, English word that comes from this same Greek word, we find it in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 14. And the word is confidence. Hebrews 3 and 14 says, For we are made partakers of Christ if we behold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. The beginning of our confidence, steadfast unto the end. Now, when you compound these two uh, words here, express image and confidence, uh, this now faith that we're talking about describes the most solid possible conviction. The God-given, listen to this, present assurance. Now, faith, a present assurance of a future reality. A present assurance. Now, faith, a present assurance of a future reality. How does now, faith, what is it? It is the substance. It is the present assurance of a future reality. Now, and notice this. The, the next verse says, and it is the evidence of things not seen. Evidence, true faith is not based on, and, and, and some of my enemies going to think, they're going to get happy to hear me say this, but true faith in God is not based on empirical observation, empirical uh, uh, 
uh, evidence. True uh, faith in God is not based on experiment. It's not based on observation. Well, what is true faith in God based on? True faith in God is based on God's divine promises. So when we say now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, this faith is the present assurance of a future reality based on divine assurances. I have a present assurance, praise the Lord, of a future reality. What is, what is it based on? Or oh, what God told me. Based on divine, hallelujah, assurance. It's not based on what America can and cannot do. And thank God for America. Thank God for Americans. I, I'm telling you, it, it, it really blesses me as I see people out there and they're saying, they're protesting and they're saying, we want to go back to work. We want to open up. We want to live our lives. I, I think that's better than people saying, we're going to stay locked up and let the government pay us. No, 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 no. Americans want to work. We want to earn our own way. Praise the Lord. Because most people know that the government, I got a secret to tell you. I got a secret to tell you uh, that the government may not want some of you to know. The see, I, I, I want to tell you something. And here's the secret. They'll never, the government will never pay you. Never. Ever pay you. Yeah. They'll never give you nearly as much as you can earn on your own. Right. Hallelujah. If you ever go through a time where you need some help, take it. But let me tell you, don't grow dependent upon it, for it, that's a trap. It's designed to trap you and keep you uh, on or just below or near the poverty line. Risk it all and go, go out, go for yourself. Start a business, get a job. Amen. A hundred doors may slam in your face. Go to the 101st. Keep going because God has something for you. It blesses me to see the American people wanting to get, get back to work. It blesses me to see how American businesses are making things to help address this current situation. And, and they're making masks and, 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 and ventilators and different things. Thank God for all of that. But my faith is not based on American ingenuity. It's not based on the heart, the discipline of the American people. It's not based on the president, and we're praying for him. And as he lead us through uh, this uh, time of crisis, my faith is based on divine assurances. The God of the Bible is alive and well. That's why I serve him with great delight. I trust him. Do you believe you're going to get through this, Bishop Wood? Yes. Why? Because Jesus is Lord. Amen. And that the Lord is able to bring us out. And then if he decides not to, show's over. <laughs> Cancel Christmas. Because no matter what anyone does at that point, except the Lord build the city. The watchman waketh but in vain. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watch over the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. But except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. So through faith, we understand, through the present assurance of a future reality, based on divine assurances, we understand. Praise the Lord. Based on present assurance of a future reality, which is rooted in divine promises, we think. We come to certain conclusions. We reason a certain way based on present assurances of a future reality. See, I'm assured today, today, where, where you are right now, today, you got to see yourself and be assured today that God has brought you out. Even though you may not see the reality of it until tomorrow or next month, or next year, if you have a present assurance 
of this future reality. What the present assurance does is, is that it frees you to act like you're already there. It, it frees you to have the joy and the peace and the peace of mind. Oh, my Lord, you don't need uh, alcohol. You don't need cigarettes. You don't need drugs. You don't need, praise the Lord, Prozac. You don't need uppers or downers because you have a present assurance of a future reality. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Based on. Not who uh, your pastor is, but based on the promises of God. Hallelujah. Let me jump into this. The author of the book of Hebrews does something with faith that not all, but many modern preachers simply will not do. The author of Hebrews, this is the first thing, had absolutely no financial motive for writing this book at all. He didn't write this epistle to be sold in bookstores. This is what's got to be perfectly understood. There was no financial numeration whatsoever. And make no mistake about it, these things affect what people will say and what people will not say. He did not consider the commercial viability of this epistle. Not at all. Political correctness was not a part of his thinking. He was not concerned with getting an invite or a return invite when he wrote this epistle. He had, he gave no thought as he wrote uh, as to what doors or platform this letter would keep him from walking through or entering. None of those things were on his mind. Whether this letter was a good career move for him that would move him up the ladder in this church. You know, you got to be careful so you can move up in the church. None of these things were uh, a part of his thinking. Praise the Lord. He wasn't pursuing a prestigious title or a position or a seat on the platform. None of these things were on his mind when he wrote this epistle. So without these considerations, considerations that not all the time, I didn't say all, but considerations that many times cloud the judgment of today's ministers. The Hebrew writer could tell the truth. That is, he could tell God's truth about how faith actually functions. I'm headed somewhere. I hear you saying amen. And I sense the intrigue. I hear others saying, where's he going with this? Follow me, follow me, follow me. About all, he tells the truth about, about faith and how it works, about all that it produces. What this present reality based on, uh, what this present confidence, this present assurance based on a future reality that is tied to the promises of God. He talks about what it will get us out of. But here's the thing. He also talks about what it will get us into. 
Faith will bring you out. And faith will take you in. In this 11th chapter, we get the full gamut of faith. We get the whole thing. In this 11th chapter, we read by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith this, by faith that. This phrase echoes again and again, line after line. In this chapter, this present assurance of a future reality based on divine assurances. This faith as taught and presented by the Hebrew writer was a powerful force, a well of refreshment and a stable platform of confidence upon which saints could stand on in every situation, in every circumstance of life. Now, I'm stressing every. Did y'all hear me say every? Not one or two, but every. Let me say that again. This faith, this present assurance of a future reality based on divine promises, as taught and as presented by the Hebrew writer, was a powerful force, a well of refreshment, a stable platform of confidence, a stable platform of confidence upon which the saints could stand in every circumstance of life. This is the effect of faith as taught and presented by the Hebrew writer. Not so as it is taught and presented by today's modern preacher. These modern faith gurus, when they serve you a, a faith sandwich, it only has one slice of bread. The meat is missing. And the other slice of bread is missing. In most cases, I didn't say all. Go on to the bookstores and pick up the, what is out there and read it. Oh, my, all these self-help gurus, all these preachers who are, are trying to sound like um, secularists. They're trying to sound like a psychologist. And you, you notice this, uh, you, for you preachers who just lean on secular psychology, and I've never understood it because the secular psychologists certainly do not lean on you. They don't recommend you. Mm -mm, mm -mm. When they say, uh, we want you to get some help, the preacher is not included. Oh, no. Matter of fact, they turned, these governments, they turned to the secularists and the secularists determined that uh, throughout covert 19 we need the ABC store because if you close the liquor stores people can't cope without liquor so liquor is essential but the same secularists, secularists said the church is non-essential. We don't need a church service. We don't need to let the saints collect. Something's wrong with that. Amen. But many of our preachers are going in that direction. And you can tell because many, I didn't say all. I didn't say all. I said many of today's believers can't cope with COVID-19. Oh my, can't go through for just a little while. I'm still amazed at the number of believers who have just simply caved. Even in areas where 
the governor didn't even ask you to close your church. They put no pressure on you. You volunteers. But we're, we're closing ours. They had to make me. Amen. And uh, uh, I just, I, I, I don't understand that. But perhaps, uh, maybe it may get revealed a little bit in this teaching. I, I can feel you out there. Some of you getting uncomfortable. I feel you swerving in your seat. And, uh, oh, he's just sounding uh, so judgmental. But no, listen to me. Listen to me. Because I preach to you strength. And I preach to you Bible. The Bible says in Proverbs 24 and 10, If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. That is... If you do nothing in difficult times, your strength is limited. When you do nothing, your strength, your ability to make a difference goes down to nothing. That's what the devil understands when he's tried to close the churches. If you faint, if you do nothing in the day of adversity, thy strength is is small to do nothing. If thou faint to do nothing literally means to go slack. If you go slack in the day of adversity, adversity here, literally, literally adversity is a time of restriction, a distressful, constricting, pressure-packed time, i.e. COVID-19. If you do nothing in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Small literally means limited. Means to be restricted in, in a narrow space. It's tightness. It's misery. It is the feeling of being hemmed in. During this time, I'm praying to God, Oh, God, don't let me come up small. Oh, God, give me strength not to faint in the day of adversity. Well, what is the day of adversity? Verse 11 tells us of Proverbs 24. Verse 11 says, If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death and those that are ready to be slain. Yes, the day of adversity is a day when people's lives are at stake. Whether it's at an abortion clinic, in the community dealing with COVID-19, praise the Lord, defending the definition of marriage, whatever the case may be, when people are going through, it is not the will of God for the saints to disappear. It's not the will of God for the believer to come up small. If you faint, in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Many among us can, and many among us have. But there are also many believers who, praise the Lord, during this time, will not boldly proclaim Psalms 46. Psalms 46 and verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will we not fear, though the earth be removed, that is chaos, and, the, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, the mountains fall into the sea. If this, this world system falls into chaos, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, and waters there, he's describing chaos, he's describing uh, uh, global uh, uh, catastrophes, he's also de de describing the waters is the sea, the, the whims of people, the uh, trade winds, the behavior, the things that go on in society. Said, though the waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, look at this. He says, There is a river. The streams thereof shall make glad 
in the midst of all of the chaos, there's a river. And the streams thereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. And where is it? God is in the midst of her. Are you hooked up to God's river? God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved in God's city. That God's in the midst and it shall not fall. God shall keep her. And that ain't all. Uh, and, and, and that right early. That is right at daybreak. Look like I can see the breaking of day. God is in the midst of her. And God will keep her. Praise the Lord. And that right early. Now the heathen rage. The kingdoms were moved. But, but, but they got in trouble. He, Yahweh, uttered his voice. And the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. Oh, you ought to tell your neighbor. The Lord of hosts is with us. You who are there, you're watching me. Praise the Lord. If you, and if you don't have anybody watching with you, say it to yourself. The Lord of hosts, that is the God of war, the God of the armies of Israel, is with us. Yeah. Hallelujah. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Just think about it. 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 See, Silah is not supposed to be read or pronounced. It, it's, it's a musical note. It means think about it. Pause and think about it. The, the Lord of hosts is with us. And the God of Jacob is our refuge. Let, 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 let that sink in. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. And then, it, then here's an invitation. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease. Unto the ends of the earth, he breaketh the bow, he cutteth the spears in sunder. God knows how to destroy weapons of war. He burneth the chariots in the fire. Be still. That is, look at this, relax. Hallelujah. I want everybody who's watching me today to just exhale. Be still and know that I am God. Do you see that? Are you looking at it? Be still and know that I am God. Be still the relaxing of your hands. Oh, you're trying to fix this and trying to fix that and doing this and doing that. And what about this and what about that? And this over here and that over there. God says, hey, ho, ho, ho. I got you. When is my government check going to come? When are they going to send me that money? When is this going? Oh, my God, the bills are due, and this is due, and that's due. What am I going to do? I'm, here's your answer. You've been praying. What am I going to do? Here's your answer. Relax your hands. Relax your hands. My God, I'm talking to somebody out there. I'm talking to somebody specifically. My God, you've asked the Lord. You've prayed within the last 24 hours or less. God, what am I going to do? Here's your answer. God says, relax your hand. Be still and know that I am God. I'll be exalted among the heathen, and I'll be exalted in the earth. The God, the Lord of hosts, he says it again, is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Can I get a witness? Let me hear you say Amen. Amen. I guess this would be a good place for me to ask for a few hand claps, a few hearts, a few whatever, a little love out there because God is with us. Do you hear me? God's with us. Now, now, let me close. Let me get to back to this. I feel my help. The reason for our inability to not handle the vicissitudes of life for many. I didn't say all. But the reason many can't handle it, it is not because the Lord isn't God. It is not because uh, we don't have the Holy Ghost. It is not because we've not been saved. It is not because we don't love Jesus Christ. It's not because we don't have faith in him. 
No, no, it's not that. In many cases, I didn't say all. I didn't say all. In many cases, it's because there's a clash going on between the commercial commercialization and the purity of the message. I'm back to that now. It is how the gospel of faith have been presented to you. You see, there comes a time when the industry of ministry and the purity of ministry will clash. Oh, many of you, you have to decide when you're, you're invited somewhere to preach and you see wickedness. And God says, say something about it. And then the voice of reason speaks and says, but if you say something, that preacher won't invite you back. My question is, what do you do then? Ah, uh, and I know what you're supposed to do, but the question is, what do you do? More often than not, we find other things to talk about. We, we shout the people happy. Uh, Facebook is filled, and YouTube is filled with praise breaks. Little sisters and homosexuals dancing, tearing, cutting the rug. But I want to know what are they dancing for? What's been said to them? You don't hear me. Oh, we got a lot of praise, but we got a lot of shouting. But you know, we we need we need some conviction. We need to put on the heavy garment of mourning for a little while. Y'all don't hear me. See, there's times when it clashes. There are times when telling it like it is. Oh, my. Uh-huh. And uh, not wanting to offend someone. Clash. When wanting to be liked and wanting to get likes are more important than telling the truth. I guess they just took Isaiah 58 and 1 out the box. Cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion. Show my people their transgressions. And the house of Jacob, their sin. I guess that's taken out of the Bible. Is it still there? District Missionary Moore says it's still there. Praise the Lord. In short, what has weakened us, here's my point, is bad theology. Because we only got one slice of bread on the sandwich. For example, let me show you now. Bring it home, wouldn't? For example, make your point, preacher. Uh, somebody told me one time, say so you preach about like a trial lawyer. You lay out your case. And maybe, maybe so. But uh, I want to give you an example. The author of Hebrews brings chapter 11. As he brings it, this chapter to a close. He talks about the fact that uh, persecution is one of the outcomes of a faith life. He talks about the fact that uh, persecution, I want to say it again, is one of the outcomes of the faith life, this present assurance in a future reality based on divine assurances will also bring persecution. Now, if you put that in the book, folk may not buy the book. You talk about the persecuted side of faith, uh, that makes the faith message less attractive. It's almost like what happened to reincarnation when it was first preached in America. Uh, that, that Buddhism and stuff, Eastern mysticism, didn't catch on because they, they, taught, they taught it pure. It was wrong, but they taught the truth about it. They said, you'll come back as a cow. You may come back as a caterpillar. You may come back as a dog. Well, that didn't appeal to Americans. Mm -mm. So they changed it. Because, you know, America want to come back you, you, you die as a man. You come back, now you're in a field eating grass. Well, I'm not joining that movement. And so they had to change it. 
And now people are saying that this must have happened to me in a past life or in my next life. See, they changed it to make it appealing. Well, the Hebrew writer wanted to tell the truth about how faith truly works. Here's the other side of the coin. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 2, are you following me out there? He says in verse 2, for by it the elders obtained a good report. By it the elders obtained, uh, they were approved by God. By faith they obtained God's approval. By faith they obtained a good report. Yes, they did. Do you see that? But now, if you read in this same chapter, because I don't think we uh, read any further than verse 2 or 3, but if you read down to verse 39, it also says, and all, and these all, also now, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. You got folk who received the promise. Then, and that was by faith. And you got people who didn't get the desired outcome. But the Hebrew writer said, they also received a good report. See, see, anytime you present the faith message, as though all it gives you is victory. Anytime you, praise the Lord, present it as uh, if you believe God, uh, everything you want is going to work out the way you want it to every time, you're setting people up to fail. See, not all of the examples in this chapter are examples of victory and spiritual success. True some of them did conquer kingdoms by faith. True, some of them did stop the mouth of lions. But then I'm going to show you in a few minutes where it says, but others, others, they didn't conquer, but they had trials of cruel mockings, scourgings and chains and imprisonment. Yet because of their faith, the world was not worthy of them. They shined anyway. So while we're going through, you got to know how to interpret what you see. Verse 3 says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are made, uh, things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. O oh Lord, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God translated him. Uh -huh. For before his translation, before God raptured him, he left this testimony that he pleased God. Oh Lord, uh, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Are you praying for me? Moves a little further in time and says, by faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not yet seen, it had never rained before, for a mist came up 
out of the, the ground and watered the whole earth. But God warned Noah and said a strange phenomenon is going to take place. It's going to rain. When God told Noah that it was going to rain, Noah moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Verse 8 said, and by faith, can I move a little further? Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance, obeyed. He went out not knowing where he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles and with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs, uh, the heir, heirs with him of the, of the same promise. For he looked for a city which has foundations whose builder and maker was God. And you know, Abraham was married. And I heard him say, through faith, also Sarah herself received, received strength to conceive and was delivered of a child when she was past her age because she judged him faithful who had promised. I wonder how many of you judge God faithful. Do you still believe that he's a God of his word? Therefore spring even of one of him of one and him as good as dead. Sarah 90, Abraham a hundred, uh, so many as the stars of the sky. God let come from this old couple. Thank you, Jesus. Saints as the stars of the sky. But I heard him say, and these all died in faith, not receiving the promises. But having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims in the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country and truly if they had been mindful of the country from whence they came out they might have had opportunity to return but I thank God that he brought me out of Egypt and I won't go back I want to tell the saints stop looking back stop looking at the world and thank God for what Jesus has done for you. If he saved you, you ought to thank God you're saved. You ought to rejoice in being saved. I'm glad that I'm saved in a day like today. The Bible said by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And uh, the he that received the promise offered uh, up his only begotten son of whom uh, it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. God said, I'm going to give you a son and in your son shall be your lineage. And then God said, take the same son that I said would your that your lineage would come through and offer your son on the altar. Good God Almighty. And uh, Abraham said, verse 19 says, according that God accounting, his was on Abraham's mind. He, he says, I'm going to offer up Isaac, but I'm accounting that God was able to raise him, to raise him up even from the dead from whence also he received him in a figure. In other words, he said, God, if 
if you want me to offer Isaac, the promised child, you already told me that Ishmael had to go and he's gone. You already told me that the promise was in Isaac, that the future was in him. And now you're telling me to offer him up. Well, I guess you're going to raise him from the dead. And the Hebrew writer said, figuratively, that is what God did because he laid him on the altar and he drew back the sword. But I had the Lord say, look over there. There's a lamb caught in the thicket. Said, don't you even touch him. Ain't God a good God? Say yeah, yeah, Lord. And uh, as I move on, I'm gonna close this message. But he talks about Joseph. Joseph was a man of faith. Oh Lord, talking about Isaac, Joseph. Joseph said, I know that you're gonna leave. You're gonna leave Egypt one day. When you leave, don't leave my bones here. Oh Lord, and, and uh, Moses, by faith Moses, when he was born, his parents hid him for three months. Oh Lord, because they saw that there was something special about him. Listen to me, parents. You gotta know how. You gotta see what God has deposited in your child. Moses' parents, by faith, hid him. The, the word had gone out, killed the Hebrew children. She hid him. Good God Almighty, she saw that he was proper. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. And then when Moses got grown, when he had come to years, he wasn't afraid either. He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of, of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. Oh Lord, by faith he forsook Egypt. Through faith, he kept the Passover. By faith, he passed through the Red Sea. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. By faith, the hollered Rahab. Good God Almighty, she perished not. Hallelujah. With them uh, that believe not when she had received the spies. Thank you, Jesus. And I heard the Hebrew writer, Brother John, I'm just like him. I'm running out of time. The Hebrew writer said, and what shall I say more? For time would fail me to tell you about Gideon, of Barak, of Samson, of Jephthah, of David, of Samuel, of the prophets. Oh, the time is running out. I had him say, who through faith, through faith, they subdued kingdom wrought righteousness, stopped the obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness was made strong. Say yeah, say yeah. They, they, they were made strong, Watch valiant in fight and turned to flight. The armies of the, of the aliens, women, received the dead, raised again, and, and others. Let me 
hear you out there on Facebook say others. I know how to spell others, but I don't know how to spell others. Maybe somebody out there can figure that out. He said, but others were tortured. You know, God took Bishop Glenn to heaven. Bishops in Detroit. Others. Others. You don't know. See, you don't know when you might be in the category of the others. But see, when you're in that category, when faith is taught properly, you know God hadn't forsaken you. See, so others... We're tortured. They could have got delivered, but they wouldn't accept it. Because to get delivered meant they had to deny Christ. So he said, no, nope, I'll be tortured. And you know what Jesus did with all their faith? Let them be tortured. They had assurance. You don't hear me. They had a present assurance in a future reality based on divine promises and it took them through torment they were tormented look at this now not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection in other words they were killed so I'd rather stand for Jesus and go out having stood for him Knowing that there's a better resurrection. Look at this. And others, somebody say others, others. had trials of cruel mockings. They believed God just as much as Moses, just as much as Noah, just as much as Enoch, just as much as Joseph, just as much as David, just as much as any of them. And yet, they went through cruelties. This is the other side. See, this is the kind that modern preacher ain't going to tell you about that because you ain't going to get no invite back telling folk you have to suffer some things there. Oh, no, 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 no. You're not going to sell any books. You're not going to sell any books uh, talking about anything like that. Others had trials of cruel mockings. <laughs> Scourgings. They weren't being beaten because they didn't believe. See, I told you, this faith will get you out of some situation, but it'll get you into others. Oh, my. See, and, and listen, you can't rejoice in the faith when it's getting you out and then complain about the faith when it brings you, puts you in. Good as God been to me. Then I run into some adversity and I go to crying and whining and asking God why. God said you didn't say why yesterday when I was blessing you. Where's all these questions now? Where's all this? What is this? What kind of body of Christ do we have? What is this? Trials of cruel mockings and scourgings. Oh, yay. Moreover, bonds and imprisonment. Or if you serve the Lord, God won't let you go to jail. God won't let you. Bonds and imprisonment. Well, you know, if you were, the, the implication here was they were all innocent. They were all innocent. And you know, you're innocent until the devil knows how to get you with the law. See, we, we looked at the scripture today. Oh, let me just show you. Oh, see, I have to... Listen, it's my job to tell you these things. Look at this. Look at this. Psalm 94 and 20 said, Shall the thrones of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by the law? 
There are people who use the law, the legislative process, to establish wickedness and to bind the saints with wickedness. It's not a God law that you got police riding by churches, driving past the crack house, past the crack house, to see what the church is doing. Supreme Court, you, you messed up. You put iniquity in the law when you legalize same-sex marriage. You can make it legal, but you'll never be able to make it right. You put iniquity in the law when you pass Roe v. Wade. Iniquity, iniquity into law. In New York City, praise the Lord, if you happen to call a it a they, if you fail to go along with uh, the charade of these messed up, demon-possessed transsexuals, the law states you'll get in trouble. That's iniquity with the, with the, with the strength of the law behind it. Oh, yeah. That, look, they know how to get you now because they just changed the law. Changed the law. Changed the law. One town, I told one preacher, I said, man, you got to fight. Over in Durham, they dropped it down to only four people can gather at a church. I don't know if they changed it. I said, man, they're trying to put you out of business. That's, true. That's, that's saying to the church, you can't have church. We don't want you to have church. The, the, the city did that, not the government, the city. What kind of people are that? That's putting iniquity into law. Yeah, I said it. Iniquity into law. And when these things happen, you find many times that God who honors faith, God who heals the sick, God who answers by fire, sometimes answers and said, I'm going to let you go through a trial. I'm going to let you go through cruelty. You're going to jail. You're going to go through. This one I'm going to allow to die. Well, God, what did I do wrong that you would give me the death sentence? Nothing. Nothing. Hallelujah. It just suits my purposes. Yes. Yes. Thank you. I'll live as long as I suit his purposes. Yes. You know who determined when my time's up? Him. Yes. Yeah. Say, so, well, well, as long as you uh, suit his purposes, you'll be all right. That's not true. Uh, you can live long. That may be true, but uh, Josiah didn't. It depends on what God wants to do. So that's what I'm trying to get you to see. Faith in God. You have, you, this is the other side to it. This is the other side to it. And this is why many times, because we don't emphasize this enough, we just emphasize, he said, whatever you want, he'll give it to you. He said, whatever you need is your, boy, we are going to put a beat, a good pretty beat behind it. God said, whatever you ask, I'll give it to you. No, 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 no. That ain't all he said. That ain't all he said. Now, we're going to talk about what he said. We're going to talk about all that he said. So when we deal with the other thing that he said, we'll be all right. So I'm called to tell you all that he said. Glory to God. Look at this, verse 37. They were stoned. They were sown asunder were tempted, were slain with the sword. Oh, they got, but they got rich. Uh, uh, Kitty Copeland, they wandered about in sheepskin and goatskin. So for those who say every believer, every believer who is not a millionaire, you remember when that was the, all the craze? Folk were lying through their teeth, lying through their teeth. I was sitting beside a broke uh, person one day. <laughs> Man, I'm a millionaire. And, and, and that was, it, he, he was doing good to be a dollar heir. 
and false, bad religion had saints walking around in a spirit of entitlement. I'm a king's kid. I'm a king's kid. And nothing bad should happen to me. And everybody should serve me. And everybody is subservient to me because my father is rich in houses and land. And I'm a king's kid. And all of a sudden, there we go. Praise the Lord. And the Bible teaches that that kind of behavior is, is, is a stench in God's nose. Because it's a holier than thou posture. And you know what killed that? That fair, uh, that fair, life. Yes, sir. Life. Cause they woke up, they woke up, and were none of them millionaires. The, the car got old. The house, same house, same outfit on. We had to start taking the shoes to the shoe repair man. It didn't work because it was false. It was false. It was false. Don't you think? That just because you may not be able to dress like someone else dresses, you may not be able to wear what someone else wears, that that's a sign that the person who wears something nicer than you are able to wear, that's not a sign that they have more faith than you. Don't you mess up your relationship with God through faulty thinking? Man, you, you got to the point where you couldn't enjoy anything. Every time the Lord bless you, there would always be someone else who would come up and say, God ain't through. This ain't it. God's got more. Well, how about, how about letting me enjoy this? If, you know, if, he, if he's got more, it'll come. But how about let me be thankful for such things, like the Bible says, as I have. Look at this. They were stoned. They were sown asunder. They were tempted slain with the sword, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute. Now, you know, depending upon the garment that you got on today, if it's made of sheepskin and goatskin, that might be an expensive garment. But that ain't what he was explaining here. He says, all these people that had this, oh my, uh, present assurance of a future reality based on divine promises, they, their plight was to be destitute, afflicted, and, oh God, and tormented. When you're tormented, you're harassed. Many of the, uh, uh, of the believers say, I'm helping your theology now because you've been, you've been shaken. Because I've heard you because you've heard about bishops who have died and Christians who have died and ministers of music and uh, people, and you wonder, Lord, what's going on? Well, Lord, was it that they didn't believe? Or Lord, what, Lord? Well, you know what? The Hebrew writer talks about both groups. And then of those who were destituted, afflicted, tormented, he, he says this parenthetically. He inserts this, of whom the world was not worthy. New York Post, you're not worthy to write anything about Bishop Glenn. Don Lyman, you, you're not worthy to say anything to the church. The world is not worthy. All these governors and people who are clamping down on the church. And people, we get these, uh, I heard someone the other day, they were criticizing uh, President Trump. They said Trump listens to Christians more than he listens to science. And Chuck Todd said that the, the people who vote for Trump are people who believe in fairy tales like um, Jonah and the whale. Well, let me tell you something, Chucky Todd. You're not worthy. 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 The Bible says, of whom the world was not worthy. And, uh, and then it says, they wandered, not in mansions, in deserts, in mountains, and in dens, and in caves of the earth. And these, well, 
Well, they must have sinned. They must have messed up. No. And all, and these all, having obtained a good report. So that's the other side of faith. That's, that's, that's the part of the story that gets left out. Your husband's not faithless. It ain't that y'all hadn't had enough faith. God to step in and just fix this right away because God can't. Well, Lord, well, what are we doing wrong? Nothing. You just keep your present assurance of a future reality based on divine promises so you won't live your life uptight, scared, wandering, bent out of shape. Praise the Lord. He says here, these, all these, having obtained a good report. Through what? I can't hear that down on Facebook. Through what? Faith. Through faith. The same faith. As in verse 1. Through faith. Yet received not the promise. So now, the next time, don't get bent out of shape. When God works a miracle for one and takes another home to be with him. Right. Say, well, that, that just don't seem fair. That's because you don't understand how faith works. Right. Heal one person, mama, and take yours. God's in charge. Right. Nobody failed. The person who allowed, who was allowed to live is no more sanctified right. than the person who died. Right. And vice versa. It's God's plan. Yes, y'all don't, yes. don't, don't, don't like what I'm saying. So you need to understand out there. You need to understand. God's got you. All of these. All. These all. And all these, having obtained a good report, through faith, receive not the promise. God having provided, provided some better thing. Now, now, now what he does here in verse 40, he goes up to real time to the recipients of the letter. God having provided some better thing for us that they without us, should not be made perfect. Said, so even though I just showed you two groups, groups who did great things by faith and groups who faith took them through, said, so now God, for the current, the recipients of the letter, God now has provided something better to us that they, all those great giants of the faith, they won't receive the inheritance without us. So look at what God has in store for us if we just Keep our faith, our present assurance in a future reality based on divine promises. Now faith, more than ever. God is saying, believe me, trust me. Put your hand in the hands of the man who calmed the waters. Put your hand in the hands of the man who calmed the seas. Take a look at yourself and you will look at others differently by putting your hands in the hands of the man who calmed.